Hello everybody, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming, and we're going to continue our Yanfly Icon Generator tutorial for RPG Maker, uh, MB in specific. Now in the first uh, part of this tutorial, I covered basically how to get the, where to get the generator and how to use most of its basic functionality. And to finish up this tutorial, uh, two-part tutorial series, uh, we're going to talk about how to export custom size icons and how to actually go in and use the the layers feature and how to add stuff and basically how to create your icons. So let's get started. I'll put a link uh, in the description below as well as uh, something on the cards up here so that if you missed the first one you could watch that first. So you've got your icon generator set up and uh, you've got the basic icons and you want to start making your own. Um, well you just click a blank spot and then you're you have categories on the left hand side here and this is the main uh, icon view and then you have your basic preview of different sizes up here and you have layers right here to get started what you're gonna do is click on the plus sign and it's gonna add an empty layer uh, then what you wanna do is uh, go to the left hand side and you have all these things to choose from I would suggest starting with like a background or a border so let's select uh, I guess I'll go with the shadow as a background now if you wanna make a copy of this one and, and create another layer, you click the double plus. If you want to make a blank one, you just click on the empty layer. If we would click this, it would add a copy of whatever we're highlighted on. So let's say uh, if we want to erase a, uh, one of the layers, we hit the, uh, the eraser tool and it'll make it an empty layer. If we want to remove it, we just click on this little bin and it'll get rid of it. So if we were to highlight the round square shadow and click the double plus, it'll add another copy of that round square shadow, which we can then change by going to the left hand side so we'll go to border and let's go with the black border or dark border they're basically the same all right so we've got our background we've got our border we've got another empty layer up here <clears throat> now what I actually need to add are some uh, earrings for custom earring graphics so I'm gonna scroll down and find uh, armors or maybe it's in items and you also have your VX Ace versions and your MB versions but they're compatible they're gonna be resized to whatever you need so you can use uh, VX Ace assets in your MB game if you own VX Ace and vice, vice versa alright system weapons Let's go to armors at the top here for VX Ace. Many more options in VX Ace as for the graphics. I feel like MV kind of went with like a very simplified Windows 8 version of graphic styling and I'm, I'm not a fan of it really. But luckily we have the option to use multiple things, multiple engines, graphics, as well as your own customs. So I'm scrolling down until I, it's all alphabetical, <clears throat> luckily, so we'll go to E for earrings here, and I think this looks pretty cool, but you may notice we have multiple layers for this earring itself, and instead of just adding this earring, I'm going to add multiple layers of it, and I'll get to Y in a second. So what we're going to do here is add this one, which is, uh, actually we're going to add the shadow. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and then once we've got that selected, we're just going to add another layer. We're going to select that one, add another layer, this one, another layer, and finally the gem, and then maybe one more layer on top of that. But what this is going to let us do is individually color and change those layers themselves. So if we highlight, let's start with this, the gem, the ruby here. If we click on this little config wheel, selecting that, we have all these options to change the opacity with the up and down arrows as well as just left clicking on it and going like that to make it more uh, opaque or see through. We'll go back to, I actually like it at 255 because what we're going to do is adjust the hue. So you can change the hue of it to change the color, which is really neat. 
<clears throat> now, how I'm going to handle uh, the earrings in my particular game is I'm going to uh, associate them with a particular stat. Uh, I've associated belts with uh, with status effects and stuff like that, but that's irrelevant to the tutorial. So let's just get into uh, the coloring. So we're going to select the color that we like. We'll go with this uh, green one right here. And we could also scale it if we wanted to to move it into a certain position or something but for this particular uh, way I'm doing it keeping it 100% works best we can move it around with the up and down arrows like so or we can hit the center to restore all the defaults if we click right there If we click on the three icons right there, <clears throat> that puts us back into the layer menu. So uh, config menu, layer menu, and you can alternate back and forth and adjust each layer. So let's select the next one, go right here, let's change the hue. And the next one, and we'll change the hue. And the background probably won't want to change the hue of that, but you can to create different looks. <clears throat> Pretty neat. I, I think it's really awesome all the different functionality this simple program has. So this will be probably uh, our agility. Actually, let's edit this. I kind of want to make it more of a green. Kind of like that one right there. All right, so we've got our gem earring. That looks pretty cool. What we're gonna do now is add another layer, <clears throat> no longer in the earrings. We'll go back to categories, and I want to select like uh, to let the player know that this is going to increase agility. I'm gonna put some sort of symbol on it might be in system, we'll have to find it. Probably in states here. Stat up, yeah, there we go. MV stat ups, or I kind of like the way that these look better, the VX Ace ones. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and select this icon for the top. Now, obviously, this is on the top layer, so it's covering the entire thing. We'll go ahead and do config in here, and let's change the size to 50% of its normal size. And we can left click on here and move it around if we wanted to. Maybe we'll do 35%. If I go any, if I go too much smaller, you're not going to be able to see it once it resizes it. So I think maybe 40% would be a better idea. Let's go with 40. See what that looks like. A lot of this is just trial and error and seeing what looks best. Yeah, I like that. Let's change the hue. Nice. All right. So once we've got that, we'll just hit our OK button. And there we go, we have our icon. But that's not where I want it, so I'm gonna cut it, and I'm gonna place it right here. So I'll put all the earrings, actually we'll put it right here. All the earrings will go right there, nice. Cool, so that's basically how you'd go about creating your own icons. Let's export a custom size. Say we wanna make this um, a picture that's gonna pop up 
we'll, we'll click on uh, custom size export and we get to select the pixel size. So let's try 256. And once again, you can't see this very well, but the left one is the confirm and the right one's the cancel. So we'll confirm that. Now we're gonna get to name it. So we'll call this AGI, we'll call it earring. AGI and hit OK and it's going to be put into wherever the executable program is there'll be a folder called output once you export something you open up that folder and it'll be there so there we go we have our large file size <clears throat> 256 by 256 agility earring we could also just export the entire thing and you can look at my last tutorial part one of this two-part series if you want to see how to export the entire icon set but what you can do with these pictures is if we were to copy this and then go into our game folder we can go into our IMG folder and then we go into our pictures folder paste it in here inside the MV engine we can create an event or however you want to do it with a common event and you can basically have it pop up where everyone we could show picture and we can select image and since we put it in that folder we can go down to earring a AGI and show it and we can adjust all of these things and change the opacity and the scale and where it's uh, drawn from I think right now it'll just draw on the top left corner we'll hit OK and then we'll show text And to get rid of a picture, we would just erase picture and uh, erase the number. You can see it's associating uh, the pictures by numbers. Hopefully, we're, we'll be able to do more than 100 pictures because right now we're limited to 100, I believe. Yeah, see, if I put 111, it would just go to 100. So I would like to be able to have 1,000 pictures or 999 at least. That would be uh, much uh, easier to do a card game that I want to build with a... Uh, not limited to only showing a hundred pictures. All right. Actually, we'll give this some icon or something. There we go. We'll look at that in game and see how the file size uh, or the, the resolution of it will change it up. So one thing I did notice though, okay, since, uh, you can tell that this this program was made with the MV engine because if it's open you won't be able to play test your game it reads this generator as an MV test run it's just kind of uh, kind of weird but it, it's kind of neat too but what you have to do is close the icon generator to test your game so we'll just save our sheet And then we're going to go ahead and exit the program. Now we'll be able to play test our game and look at that picture in game. And you can see it's showing that icon that we created right there. Pretty neat. I think that's really awesome. But that's going to do it for this second part of the tutorial for Yanfly's icon generator. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial series, you know, just to go over the basics on how to use it. I hope to see a lot of custom icons in the games that I play from you guys that send me. A, I, I really appreciate when you guys go that extra step and put those put work into custom icons and everything. And that's why I'm going to do that in my game as well. In the next one, Dungeon of Driftwood, a lot of customization. A lot of time is going to be put into it. Release date, probably early 2017. So it's a while's away before I release the dungeons. It's probably about 10% done right now. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next uh, video tutorial. If you do like this sort of content, a thumbs up is really appreciated. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that stuff. I really uh, love you guys. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next tutorial.